So welcome along. It's high time we did a uh, blues Zoom and uh, absolutely delighted this morning to be uh, joined by a uh, blues legend from uh, the 80s. Those of a certain age will remember Noel Blake, um, described by Razor Ruddock as one of the five hardest players of all time, um, along with Mick Harford, another blues player, but, um, but fantastic competitor and now involved on the other side of football with the League Managers Association, been a coach as well. And uh, very good day to you, Noel. It's, it's lovely to see you and see your, your, your blues um, shirt proudly over your shoulder there. That was from what? That's the early 80s kit, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, early 80s kit. Um, and uh, I think it was probably the first sponsorship they had with the Ansels. That one, Ansel's that Brewery one. M and B. I remember that song from the terraces. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, my children bought it for me for my sixtieth. Um, they got they got it for me, and that, so so it wasn't a, it's not an original because back in the day we never used to get kits after the game. You know, like the players have got twenty five shirts a season, something like that. Now we never used yeah. to get a shirt. It's just everything had to go back in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're a real veteran. I mean, you've been around Pompey, Leeds, um, LMA now. Um, but I mean, I'm coming on to you today because, you know, it's a, it's the start of a new season. And I know you were involved in the technical side of the game. And we've all been caught by, surprised, but thrilled by the involvement of Tom Brady last week at St Andrews. He's going to be uh, uh, there for the Leeds game at the time of recording this. Um, I just wonder your thoughts, really. I mean, I mean, he... The club is saying that he's going to be involved on the, the technical side, nutrition, well-being, all that kind of thing. And from your time, when you worked at the, the Football Association for a number of years, working with the, with the young players, what do, do you think that's a good thing? I mean, how, how would you see he's going to have any influence as an American footballer? I don't know to what entity that he's going to be involved on that side of things, because I would guess... Um, the club would appoint people, or if they if they already haven't got them in place in terms of the nutrition and sports science department, who will run things. I guess they'd probably take advice from him in certain areas, um, because within that, for example, when I was at the FA, they had people who looked after, they had you know specialists in the sports science department who did the nutrition, um, medical, and all that side of things, um, which is very very important, and especially in the modern game now, without that. You know, you, you are sort of treading water. So you've got to evolve. And it's just great to see whichever way they can maximize his sort of uh, experience, even from a different sport is sport. Um, nutrition is nutrition. Um, obviously, you, you need a little bit more, slightly different for certain, uh, certain types of sport. But I think, they, I think they'd be wrong with the club if they didn't utilize his knowledge and experience in that, in, in that area. Yeah, do you, do you think it is that, or is it really he's there for you know? Listen, he's one of the he's probably one of the greatest American sportsmen of all time. I mean, when he saw that that vision of him, that image of him standing there doing that with the camera last night, you're, you're a bit like Lord Kitchener. Your country needs you. Come to St Andrews. I mean, I thought it was so powerful. Um, I mean, it, uh, to me, I mean that 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 is it, isn't it? That in the in the days of FFP, you know, they've got a Blues have got to maximise commercial 
opportunities and to uh, not just the UK, but uh, the US and other continents. Tom Brady's going to have massive pulling power, isn't he? Oh, without a doubt. And I think you've only got to look at what's been happening at Wrexham recently. You know, the two Hollywood um, um, uh, guys. Because that is something that our club has needed for a long, long, long time. Um, it's a great impetus. And, you know, we've just got to maximise it at the football club. You know, and indeed the city. Um, because there's always uh, people quick to shoot the area down for various different reasons, for, you know. Um, and obviously, from our point of view, Birmingham City, we've had the situation for different owners and wrongful owners and this that been going on for years. And to get some positivity around the club, um, really, it's, you know, it's left me personally with a lot of optimism going forward. Yeah, investing in the area. That's uh, Tom Wagner. And I've been very impressed with him or watching him on the business channels. You know, I, I mean, going you know, cr across continents here, um, the way he's talking, I mean, it's the most exciting thing that's happened to Blues for a long, long time. Um, interesting to hear that you said, Noel, um, our club. I mean, still, you, you played all over the place, but you're, you're very much a Blue, right? Oh, I'm a Blue nose. Oh, that been? <laughs> I grew up in Sparkbrook and Spark Hill, you know, and then obviously I moved to Stetford when I was about 14, 15, 14, 13, 14. But I'm still a blue nose, never, that will never change, you know. It's, 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 it's a club I supported. My uncle took me, my, my uncle passed away last year, but he took me in 1973, he took me down to my first game um, to watch us against uh, Blue uh, Wolves. You know, that was my first game. And, you know, it's, I'm, I'm a blue nose and I always have been and always will be. Yeah, so you're a, you're a young lad then. Um, I, I, we we exchanged a little, uh, a couple of messages when Trevor passed yeah. recently. Um, uh, I understand he he has the funerals already passed. They did it very quickly in Spain, and yeah. the club are going to mark his passing. And uh, for the Leeds game, there's going to be applause on the eighth minute, which would be uh, very appropriate because, he, like like you, Noel. I mean, I I'm a little bit older than you. I I can remember, but I saw Trevor's debut, uh, the the seventy seventy one season. And you support, speak to anybody who was there, the magic was something which we've never seen since, really, even with the Jude stuff. Trevor was an incredible player when he was 16. Yeah, just that thing. It reminded me of when Ray, Wayne Rooney first emerged. That, that, remember that shot when he, 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 when, he, when he was 16 and he got the ball and he, and he stood on the ball and put his hands on his hips and said, come and take it off me if you think you can. And it, Tre Trevor was like that. He didn't pass to it. He didn't need to pass to anybody. Half his goals were scored on the run, you know. Um, so 73, you, you'd have seen, I mean, he was around the time that he made, just before he made his England debut, but um, he was still, that season, it was the second season in pr promotion season, wasn't it? Second season in the first division. Yeah, it was a few, few years before he made his England debut. I think he made his England debut after that, 77. Yeah, he got, he got injured. He was 21. I mean, he should have been playing before he did, yeah. but in those days, they didn't pick Achilles England didn't. players. He did his Achilles, didn't he? I think something like that. That's right. Yeah, Achilles. it was. Yeah, it was. It wasn't his Achilles. It was. Um, yeah, it was. It was a technical thing that kept him out for yeah. a while. Yeah. But I mean, how, he, do, how do you remember him? I just remembered him as uh, obviously the famous street actual lap Francis and what have you, and then people forget Gordon Taylor playing in the wing as well. But I just remembered <laughs> the is is the ability to pick it and drive past people with skill, pace, and poise. Mm. And I all remember a game, I think it might have been Burnley, when he's, no, it was QPR, Frank McClintock and David Webb playing that QPR team. Yeah. An international back four, if you like, apart from David Webb at the time, with um, Ian Gillard and Dave Clement playing for QPR. Yeah. And, that. and his ability to just drift past people and score on the run. You know, it, 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 and then he had a, 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 an uncanny ability when he's crossing, what I call a fall over cross. So he's gone to the byline and he's putting the ball into the box, but he's falling over at the same time, leaning going backwards. You know, yeah. but I, it, for me, it was the goal of the season, wasn't it? That, that the QPR was the goal of the season. Yeah, that's um, the one. But he's he just a terrific player, all round player. Um, yeah, he was a very sad. I did a I did a podcast with him, which you can find on this on this page on this uh, YouTube channel. Um, where we talked about his big, big lover of music as well, Trevor. And, you know, he knew people like Bruce Springsteen and obviously Jeff Lynn and all kinds of people. Um, uh, such a nice, I mean, I was so shocked when I heard, I really was. Well, uh, I think the thing, what he, what he, what he brought to to people, um, he's a superstar, a world superstar. And people yeah. forget that, 
you know, people forget that. Um, and to me, as I said, he, 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 you know, we we called him God. We, we, we went to school at Golden Illick, which is not far from St Andrews. Um, and we used to, afternoon, we used to skip across and watch reserves sometimes, you know, um, and, the, and the old football combination. Yeah. And we used to do that. And so you, you grew up watching the, the Blues and the young boys and what younger players and what, you know. Fortunate to play with someone like you know Kevin, Kevin Brudos, for example. He was playing mm. in reserve in the old days and what have you. Ricky yeah. Sprague, people like that. So I saw a lot of blues uh, uh, stuff, you know. Um, but for me, Trevor, the old song Trevor Francis Walks on Water, <laughs> you know, and stuff. He was God. I do. We used to call him God. Mm. You know? mm. uh, do you, would you like to see it? I mean, there's been a, a few calls for a, a kind of statue, a bit like you know, a lot of clubs have got like Leeds and you know the, the Trinity at Man United. Um, That'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? I mean, I, I, it just feels like the right time. I know there's the, the mural. If you go up by the corner yeah. of the Cattell Road and yeah, where it, the Tilton yeah. is in the club shop, you've got the Jude and Trevor thing. But I mean, to have a statue of him, I think it would be quite nice, wouldn't it? it would really. I think it, obviously, I, I, I think it'd be fitting. And to, not because of his passing, I thought they would have done something like that in the first place. But recognise where the clubs are, the club is from financial situation. They were never in a position to do that. No, uh, I think there's enough people within the city and people within the game um, that hold him in such a high esteem that I think it'd be a fitting tribute to him. Yeah, it it, it would. Um, I'm, I'm sure something like that will happen. Um, and also, I mean, it, it is that change at Blues and going back to, to to the Wagner thing. I don't know if you've seen the new badge on the on the on the cop car park, um, the, the 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 club crest. Have you seen it? This um, no, not yet. Not yet. It's yet. huge. I mean, it's it, it, it's gone right up. Um, just came on. It's the, it'll be seen this weekend for the first time by the fans. But it's uh, it just feels like a complete breath of fresh air, doesn't it? At Blues after um, what's been yeah, a there, there decade is, of just terrible stagnation. Yeah, you you, you, you know, stagnation is is the right word. And whenever I spoke to a lot of people within the game, it was, there's trouble at that club, there's trouble at that club. It's all you ever sort of uh, refer to, you know, there's always issues yeah. going on and what have you. And like I said previously, it's it's great that there is some positivity and some real positivity going on around the club. You know, the, the, obviously we had this, this the situation with it, um, the stands being sort of un, unoccupied in match days and the revenue not yeah. coming and all that. And they, they straight away they've come in and they've started work and doing things, getting things in mm. motion, getting things done. And when you get that um, as a player, when you can see things like that around what's going on around you, honestly, I promise you, it gives you such a buzz. It really yeah. does. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can you know, listen. Like, we're, we're, we're all, we all dreamed as kids of running around St Andrews, I'm sure. You know, I did. I was never good enough, but I mean, you were. Um, I, I, and just to update on that, I mean, I, I think you know, the safe standing at the bottom of the Tilton is coming in. Um, from what I can see, that it's sort of half done. I think it'll whether it's, some of it will be open this weekend. I don't know, but I mean the the, the lower cop's going to be in the end of November, I think. But um, it, it's getting back slowly. And as a player, you, you, I mean, I, I can't imagine the, the difference. I mean, you played. I'm just trying to remember one game where you would have been involved. Um, the, the Villa game when was it Boxing Day? What uh, went three nil game? Yeah, the Villa game. I played. What did I play? I played. Did you play? Yeah, I'm just trying to remember. Howard, it's the famous one when Howard Gales on the on the on the, on the no, fence. No, 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 no. That was the uh, Birmingham Senior Cup. That one. Was it? No, sorry. Yeah, how he scored after, and then the, the previous, the game after that. I um, mean, that was the game after. But the Boxing Day game, I played and I scored um, with myself, Ian Anderson, God rest his soul. Yeah, God rest his soul. Yeah. Yeah, and I think Mick Ferguson scored with, 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 with the three 0 game. Yeah, playing that Boxing Day game. Yeah, I mean, uh, and uh, you know, looking at the pictures of that, I and mean, it was, you know, it was the cops, incredible, wasn't it? Um, what, what was that like? I mean, just to hear that, that that noise coming down, and when you when you and that kind of lift that 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 the players have been missing this last ten, you know, the last few years, and just that general, because you know what, San Andrews used to be one of the most hostile grounds in the country. Um, we know what it's like. It, it, that's just it's just died the last few years, and yeah. that yeah. you know, do you think that's going to come back now? I think so, um, because I think it's a, with, what, with the takeover and the sort of uh, positivity going around the club, the positivity going around the club, what it'll do, it'll bring those people who stayed away back to the club um, mm. for whatever reason. And it'll, it's almost now 
a new generation will come from that as well. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Mm. I feel, and you know, the game is getting bigger and bigger. And even through throughout the the sort of issues that we've had as a club, the crowd is still reasonably good, still in the twenties, eighteen, twenty thousand yeah. on a regular basis. So it's so it's there. So it's just a case of now adding on to that. Um, you know, and, and if you like jumping and jumping on the back of what's going on now and kick start mm. it. But it's interesting that you, you mentioned about the cop because that's where I used to start with my mates from school. Yeah, me too. We used to, we used to go on, on the cop, you know, um, lean up against a pulse and what have you are, sort of middle, 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 middle section there type of thing. And, you know, it's as a player, whenever you're playing for any club you're playing for and you've got vibrant supporters behind you. It don't have to give you a lift. I bet. It don't yeah. have to give you a lift because I don't know. It's 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 really the special feeling when you when when the, when the fans are with you, you know. Um, and then sometimes when you're having a bad day, I remember the one game we played against uh, Norwich at home. I think it was an Easter Monday, Easter Saturday. And we, we, we were probably the worst game, our, in my opinion. Our this would have been about 80, 80, 83 Yeah, and we yeah. lost. We lost four 0 at home. And they had Birch was playing for Norwich, Keith Birchin oh. and John Dean. Yeah. And just couldn't do a thing right. And we lost 4 0, as I said. And the gaffer got us in the next day. And we had a game, I think we had a game on the Monday. It was Dorsey. captain there, was it uh, was it Saunders? No, no, no. Pre- no manager, yeah, Ron was manager, yeah. Was it? Yeah, Ron was, I only played for Ron at Blues, who was the manager. Yeah. And he, he got us in and he laid the law down on the Sunday morning at the training ground. And then after that, we just went on a, on a reasonable good run. You know, and he just said that that's not acceptable. You know, um, the performance wasn't acceptable, so you can lose. But he just looked, we were threading water. I always remember it. And I felt personally, I felt, I felt wrong because for whatever reason, I didn't perform. Wasn't that, it wasn't that the lads didn't try? Cause we always tried because that was, that was a given at Blues. Mm. That was a given. It was a bit, the expression he used to talk about was, in making a cake, what's the first ingredient? Hard work. But we just couldn't get going at all, you know, for love, no money. We just mm. could not get going. But then after that, we went on a decent run, um, you know, sort of thing. So during my time at the club, no, you could, you could never point the finger to anybody and say that we didn't, no one, we didn't put a shift in. Always yeah. put a shift in, win, lose, or draw, always put a shift in. But sometimes you get um, you get performance, you're thinking, people, you hear people use the expression, they haven't turned up today, and you just don't know why it's happened. Yeah. You can't put your yeah. finger on it. No, psychology in football, I mean, it's just a massive thing. You know, and this is the Tom Brady thing. It'd be so interesting to see how he can, you know, translate that. I, I'm just trying to picture him sort of standing in front of, you know, the kind of the academy kids. And um, yeah, you're right, sport is sport, isn't it? There is a lot to sort of pass between between the two and that. Because he was a, he was an underdog, wasn't he, as well? I mean, I you know, it's, it's my, my book, Underdogs and New Sounds, to me, it's, yeah. it's a part of my DNA as well. Always loved it, you know, and it's always something that it's a British thing, isn't it, as well? Uh, do you think, I mean, do you think the players, how they, how they will react to him? Because um, you know, when, you, when, you, when you know somebody like that watching you, I mean, it's got to be a lift, hasn't it? It does give you a lift. Um, some some players will take it in, in, a, in a different way, not in a negative way, but some people take take it take it on board more. Others will go well, and just human nature. You look at the odd one or two. What is yeah. It, what is it? What do you know? It? Kind of thing. Yeah. But but yeah. Well, I mean, you always get that, don't you? If things don't yeah. go go well, people start to make you know they sort of get a bit funny and um, you know. Uh, but it's a I bit also like the people. Sorry, lots of the people look at it the other way. Take out of it what you need. And the positive aspects of it, what it can mm. give you, and give you the, you give the environment that you're working in, yeah. um, and utilize that. Don't worry about the negative side of it. What what it can't. Think about what he can do. What 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 he can bring to to to, to you. Yeah, you you you're, you're sounding no like you were talking because you were under 16s, under 17s, under 18s at the FA for. Uh, yeah. 90, you, did, you work, did you work with people like Harry Harry Kane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sterling around that period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It, it, let's put it this way: it'd be easy to say who I didn't work with at that time. Yeah. yeah did sure. did you when you're looking at them? I mean, it's easy with hindsight, isn't it? But when you, I mean, I I watched Harry Kane play for Millwall against Blues when he was on loan, and he'd been around. He went to Norwich. He went to various places, and I'm thinking, oh, it's that kid who's gone off, and he's, it doesn't look like he's going to make it. And all of a sudden, he goes back to Spurs. And just scores a, a shitload of goals in one season, you know. And 
Did, did, was that obvious to you? As a... The interesting thing with Harry, um, H as we call him, um, the interesting with H, he was a number 10 who could also play midfield, if you like, a deep, like uh, an attacking midfield player. Um, to the point where one game in France in the, in the European quali- European finals, I actually played him against Pogba. Could be a very good front line of Berry, you know, a Foby, people like that. Mm. They've Edmund, right, um, Raheem would play up. So we play Ari as an attacking midfield player, and he still scored goals. He's an intelligent footballer. Um, but the thing with, with when you when you work with young players is they're hot and cold. But if you can yeah. see, if you feel that they've got potential, and you, you're convinced with the potential. And it's not going to come through straight away because they're up and they're down. That's just that's just development. Mm. Um, and when you're working with development, it's 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 you as a coach, you need to understand that, um, and then you can go from there. You know, because yeah. don't forget, in the men, they're playing within an, an age limit. You know, but there's no question, and it's not hindsight. Like I said, hindsight's never changed. A wonderful thing, but Harry Kane all that ability. Raheem Sterling, all that ability. Nathan Redmond, all that ability. Yeah, you know? it's the mental side, isn't it? I mean. I- you look at, and it's, again, easier now with hindsight, but Jude Bellingham, I, I saw his debut at Pompey where you played, and there was something about, I mean, I'd, I'd heard of him since he was you know, 12, yep. um, and there's a reason for that, wasn't there? Because you know, he, was, he was making waves way outside of his, of his technical ability. Yeah. There's something about that kid, his mental strength. I remember looking, in, as he came, he ran past me on that day at Pompey, and I just thought, Something about him that just looks like he's, he just looked like he wanted it, and it, all through his career so far, I mean, it just marks him out, doesn't it? He's an absolute you, monster of mentality. You know, all, you mentioned you there and, and Harry. Um, all the top young players that I worked with, the one thing they they all had. Connor Cody's another one, great example. They all had this innate self determination, self confidence, and self belief. Yeah, and all they were looking for was a platform to go and evolve. Yeah, and the yeah. truth be known about Harry Kane, there's a lot of people at Tottenham at one point didn't really fancy him, but there are people within the within the um, organisation, like a Tim Sherwood, like a Les Ferdinand, and a Chris Ramsey, and a John McDermott, who knew and believed in him. Yeah, so when yeah. you get the right people around you and the right environment, in, in any in any sphere, whether it's a business or football or whatever, if you've got the right environment and the right people around you and you've got the talent, you can excel. You yeah. can excel. Well, well let's hope uh, the likes of, um, well, the, the Job thing's been interesting, but it's obvious why he was going to go to Sunderland with um, Mike yeah, Dodds yeah. and the people who, you know, that it's, yeah. it's, it, uh, it, listen, he hasn't had the, maybe the best start there, but I mean, he's got technical ability. We all know that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe, you know, people like George Hall at Blues, I know he's injured at the moment. Um, he, a lot of people speaking very highly of him. And I, I went to the Cheltenham game the other night. I love going to grounds like that. And to see uh, the, the Sikh lad, uh, Kedra, um, who came off the bench. Um, that's, that's terrific, isn't it? Seeing, seeing players like that. Because that, that, to me, that's the future. If you've got a good academy and you've got kids coming through, you're halfway there, aren't you? Well, it's, Birmingham is a very diverse city anyway, as we know. Yeah. Um, and it's always been historically. And there's a lot of talented kids in that academy. I've seen the academy down below as well. There's a lot of good work going on at Blues behind the scenes. There's mm. really talented young lads that people haven't even heard of just yet. But there's a yeah. lot of talent in there. Yeah, it's cat, it's cat two, isn't it? At the moment, it's going to be they're going to get they need to get back to cat one, don't they? Yeah, I mean, again, categories. <laughs> see, I, I've never been one to worry about the categories you're in. You're a good player if you're a good player wherever you play. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's having like players it's stolen from you, isn't it? That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, if you cat two, you you, you 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 know the club big clubs can say, oh well, he's well, he's good. We'll, we'll have we'll him. You, the cat yeah, one, that can't happen so much. Yeah, we'll, we'll give you less money for him and what yeah. have you. Um, and that. But then the clever club, what they do, like Blues, with uh, Blues are very clever. And what they do, they'll get them get them in the first team soon. Mm. Yeah. And uh, no, that wasn't a bad. You know, I thought they could have got more for, for, for Jude from, from Dortmund. If I'm honest. I really? Thought yeah. I, I really thought so. Yeah. Because well, they're going to get another said, fifteen million, aren't they? Roughly another yeah. thirteen million, something like but that. You, but even then, as you said, Jude was talking about, spoken about from 12, 13 years of age. Yeah, I'd, I'd heard of him, and I just yeah, I, so, without even trying, you know. Um, yeah. If you're in the game, you'll know, you know, you, you know about these boys, you know, sort of thing. Girls now coming through as well. There's some talented, like I said, there's some talented kids in the Blues Academy. Yeah. Yeah. Talking of academies, and this, this is one that, that makes you unique, Noel, and you're not alone in this. Uh, you and Hoppy, 
Robert Hopkins, both mm. started at Villa. Yep. Um, I just want to, I mean, listen, I, I'm just trying to put myself in your shoes and you're a pro and you, 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 you're a blue nose and you mm. went to Villa. And there's a famous story, wasn't it? Didn't Robert Hopkins have a blues top underneath his Villa one or something like that? And he got, isn't that, is that right or not? He got, he got, he, he, he got a clip from one of, uh, not a clip, physical clip, but he got, um, he had, um, what do you call it? His badge on, blues, blues chain. Um, oh yeah, the other, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's it. And so he always wore it um, and that sort of thing. Uh, what, but, when he, even when he was playing? Yeah, yeah, but we were, we, listen, we, 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 we're, we're lads and um, you don't, Wayne Rooney is an Everton fan. Just because he goes to play for Man United, yeah, he's yeah. an Everton fan. You know, yeah, it, it's it's there. You are you are, you are what you are. Yeah, you're a pro, but what, what I'm just wanted, but deep, it just what from the horse's mouth now. We, I can't imagine ever. It, it, well, you're a pro, aren't you? You do it, but yeah. but did it feel weird playing for Villa? No, no. So you didn't. You just you just the shutters come down. And you just play. You want to become a you want to become a professional footballer. Aston Villa offered me a, a, a contract to become a professional footballer. That's what I wanted to do. I'd gone to Blues and Blues before, Blues deemed I wasn't good enough. Yeah. So my opportunity came at Villa and that's what I did. Um, so when I played against Villa, didn't make any, any difference out of the Blues fan. I played, um, when I played against, sorry, when I played against Villa for Blues, I played like I'd play for against anybody else. Yeah. Did you do that? Bit. I'm just trying to think if you, do you play for Blue, against Blues for Villa? No, I didn't play against I didn't play against Blues for Villa, but I played for Blues against Villa. Ah, listen, now, which which brings us to the, the game, which um, one of my all time most memorable games, the, the the famous one when you missed a pen and Villa won one nil, eighty two, eighty three, known as the horror show, the Battle of Birmingham, and you you um, you got well, you had a disagreement, should we say, with Steve McMahon at the end. Funnily, I mean, looking at the the, the, the YouTube of that game, I mean, it was absolutely fit one of the dirtiest games i think i've ever seen um but you know the red mist came down you oh, you missed oh, you had a goal disallowed as well didn't you? And the ball crossed the line yeah. in that game as we lost one nil it was a fluky goal i was with it's in my book actually underdogs and news hounds and i was with an american lad that day he'd never been to an english game before and it was raining sideways and he was he was going he loved it but he just couldn't you know he didn't he just, it was just so um, different, you know, and that kind of one-eyed communion on that on that Whitten Terrace that day, it was incredible. And uh, yeah, you did you, you, that was a goal, wasn't it? You scored the ball crossed the line, and, and it looked like it, and the place just uh, erupted. And then, yeah, the as, the old, as the old saying goes, <laughs> the referee didn't give us it wasn't a goal, but we at the time we felt it was a goal. Um, looked I like it. it. Yeah, it, it, he hadn't he, he'd given it for on ball in the build up, apparently. Oh, was it? Okay. Uh, yeah, that's what he uh, given it for, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, listen, you, you, things happen in, in, in a game, a bit like Lauren James the other day. Things yeah. happen in the game and emotions take over. And in that split second, you don't know what you're doing. No. You don't no. even know what you're doing. And, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, Chris, I get a little bit annoyed with it in terms of people always seem to want to remember, remember that game, or not the game, but that incident as if that was the, a big part of your career. And all that. I'm thinking, no. That's, yeah, that, that happened. The other players got sent off here, there, and everywhere throughout their careers for misdemeanors and what have you. Um, but that doesn't that didn't define my Blues career. No, but it, I suppose you know the media because you're a Blues fan and it was such a you know a, a, an intense game and and what happened because it, you know, the tackle that Steve McMahon made on on Kevin Broadcast uh, Broadhurst finished his career, didn't it? I mean, it was a horrible challenge, um, and that was the end of him pretty much. I mean, you. Uh, and what was it? A few, few words exchanged, wasn't it, McMahon? You know, yeah, yeah they beat us one nil. Was it? It's a fluky goal. We shouldn't have lost that. Yeah, game. Uh, with, big with his with his scored it. Another blue former blue. Yeah, player. another former blue. Yeah, yeah. He, he when the ball got caught the put back and stuck in the water, put the pass back and whatnot, went through and scored. But it's it's one of them where I mean, just go about briefly with the penalty. I just used to blast the penalties. Um, with myself and Billy Wright, which because no one wanted to take him. Yeah, Billy was, Wright, he was a bull of a player, wasn't he? Yeah, no one wanted to take him. So the gaffer said, Me and Billy can share him. Um, and I'd scored a few, Billy scored a few, and it was my turn to take it. And for some unknown reason, I think because of the, the, the actual delay, experience was a wonderful thing. I would have probably just walked away, but I was just so eager to get. I, went, I remember going to the altar to get the ball and go back to put it down and waiting and waiting. 
And I changed my mind. You know, I tried to side foot it rather than blast it like I normally did. And that mm. was that was the problem and big thing to save it, obviously. But it's um it was one of them words of exchange with, with me and Maka. And I thought he said something derogatory. Um and obviously I, I, you know, I I, I put, let's let's say I not I nutted him. Uh, <laughs> not to, uh, yeah, uh, the second most I, famous headbutt after the Dion Dublin on Robbie Savage. But it yeah. was a, but the interesting thing for me and from my from my side. I mean, I mean, Gary Newborn got a lot of stick after that because he he sent the because the referee didn't see it. Um, there's a famous photo of the ref looking at you, and you standing there walking off. Um, I mean, I, and I think there was, there was some afters in the changing rooms and everything. It was a really bad tempered day, right? There's some of the lads got you know it really did kick off after the game, right? I've I've heard that bit about people going in changing rooms all the time, you know. But I can I can honestly say under my art, I don't know about the change no, no, no. because I didn't see that and I didn't hear, and I'm even I'm even read people talk about referring to me that I've been in the chain I've been in the chain room fighting the lads and all that. Listen, I got on great with the lads at Villa. Fact, yeah. like they were my former teammates. I got on great with them apart from on the pitch. Like and they were the only one whoever I played against on a match day, they were my enemies. That's how I played. They were my enemies. Mm. For that 90 minutes, 95 minutes, whatever it was, they're my enemy. As soon as the whistle had gone, I just back to square one again. Yeah. Ball, you know, and that, and you know, big Gary Shaw used to pick me up from pick me up from King's Earth, uh turn bus term, 55 bus term is taken to, to training, to training. So that, uh, we played in our youth team together, you know, mm. so that people are group with a, a villa. Mm. So n- none of that, as far as I was aware, uh, took place. Yeah, uh, but you got banned after that because Gary Newborn sent the tape to the. To yeah, I got one, I got a one match, I got a one match done. Yeah, yeah I, went to, I went to the FA and I got a one match ban, and the game I missed was Liverpool away. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, a shame. Actual, yeah, actual, but, but there okay. you go. Let's, let's just bring it up to uh, to, 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 to to now. Um, you, you're, a te- you, you're working for the LMA um, uh, as, a, as a as a technical advisor. Yeah, what what does that involve, and what 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 do you want to do now? What's what's your future, Noel? My future at the moment. Um, the, th- the thing, Chris, is that I work with a, an, an LMA mentor, and I do some match delegation for the Premier League. Um, so I've got to observe the officials. So ironically, you're talking about officials. Um, and, but mentoring is what I do now. Um, qualified mentor, you know. Mentoring who? Players or, or players, young, young, young coaches, young managers. Yeah. Um, on behalf of the LMA. Yeah. Um, and my own run my own consultancy. Okay. Well. So that, that's what I do. Because yeah. I had um, a stroke about eight, nine years ago. Yeah. And then that really battered me. So I came out of coaching. Really, I didn't. I couldn't go back. I can go back into coaching. Um, those people who've had a stroke will know uh, uh, part of it. The legacy, what it leaves, is the f- fatigue syndrome. So you, today, I'm I, I'm as bright as anything. I can do everything. I can yeah. go whatever. But you're tomorrow, looking great. Gotta say, yeah. But tomorrow, I'm absolutely shattered. Mm. So it takes its toll. So there's no point me going back into coaching. So there's various different ways of coaching. And the mentoring is, is, an, is, an, is an area that um, you know, yeah. I thoroughly enjoy. I just uh, wonder, Noel, on the crossover there, you know, what you're saying, the mentoring, is what Tom Brady is going to do at Blues, isn't it? I mean, that's what they're saying, you know, apart from the, 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 the commercial opportunities. But I'm just wondering whether, whether you could sort of, you know, you could sort of get together and sort of see how he does it. It'd be really interesting, wouldn't it? I don't. I'm not one. I'm not one of these, Chris. I put myself into people's uh, uh, arena. <laughs> you know, I mean, I but, like it, is, but it is. That's what he's going to be doing. I mean, that's you know, yeah. that's the, the, the impression you get. This sort of thing about wellness and and all the yeah. rest of it. Yeah, because uh, because just you know, and, and I don't mind. I've said it, I've been public said it before, and I say it again. I, I went through all that stage about the wellness side of things, about the depression and the suicide thoughts, and it was I was oh. quite you know, really bad at one point, really bad, um, and suffering with anxiety and all that sort of thing. So you, you've learned how to cope and manage and, and get on with your life um, and spin your life around. And I guess the football, being a player and all that sort of thing, teaches you resilience and all those sort of things and how to cope in, in, in situations. And sometimes you've got to go through those hardship to recognise how to step back on, you know, because life is not, life is not smooth. There's always a little hurdle and path. You step off the path. You got to get back on the get back on the path, and so on and so forth. And that's what I've had to do. Um, and you know, it's a bit like we, where we started with, with the Blues, the, the new positivity around the club. It's we, the club has been through a, some turmoil over the last 15, 20 years, whatever. Um, and now is a time potentially now for back on the right path to go again. You know, and stamp our authority as a football club. 
you know, in, 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 in the game. And I'm looking forward to see how their season go. And obviously, like all Blue, Blue, Blues fans, hopefully, we, 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 you know, minimum we're getting our playoffs. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and let us sort of end on that. Um, it's, it's hard to know how it's going to go. Uh, say we're recording this on the eve of the Leeds game. Um, Leeds, again, they've got some American import, haven't they, with, the, with Justin uh, Thomas and Jordan Spieth and American owners, the 49ers as well. Uh, it's kind of globalised. I mean, it's so interesting with the, you know, the US World Cup a few years away as well. It's great yeah. timing for Blues. This. I just think that the, the pulling power could be enormous. H- how long do you think it will take to to get back to... You know, a lot of clubs say we should be in the Premier League, but Blues obviously uh, a big club. Um, how long do you think it'll take? It's all dependent on investment because whatever is going on off the field, ultimately you've got to get a team on the field and assemble a squad of players who are capable over a period of time. To you, you, you can't. It's difficult to get success overnight in football now. It mm. Really difficult. People, a lot of teams have tried to buy their way and it's it failed. You know, look, with all due respect, you've only got to look at Chelsea last season, the millions they spent, and they didn't have an identity in terms of what it didn't look like a Chelsea team in any way, shape, or form. Mm. You know, um, so they've had to revamp again this year in, the, in, the, in this current uh, window in the summer market here to try and get the club back onto the even keel. So it does take time. You know, it's only two, two, two and a half years ago when Blues were fighting relegation. Yeah, well, and multi thought, years. Yeah, multi years. Yeah. That's why I thought the the, the the job John Eustace did last year was f- fantastic yeah. from a Blues fan's point of view, for me anyway, because not only did they capable, apart from when the injuries kicked in, they all look as they could push on and maybe just get on the back end of those playoff areas, but yeah. they did really well. And hopefully can continue again this year. Yeah, yeah. Playoffs or not, do you think? I think we still need a, a few more players. Yeah. Um, I think we, we I think I really think that squad depth is really important because it, especially you can have a good team, but you need a good squad because the championship is, is unrelenting. You know, it's Saturday, yeah. Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, and it's happening. And if you get two or three injuries to key players, you know, um, then, then you can be in trouble. So you, you need really minimum of two players per position of yeah. good quality. Yeah. You know? um, if yeah I saw yeah. just, just watching the Cheltenham game. I, I like the look of Dembele, who played. Uh, he looks a very good yeah. footballer. Looks a very good footballer, who he does. Um, but yeah, listen, it's um, a long way to go. And Craig Gardner's got some great contacts. I know. And you know, Tom Wagner said he's done a great job so far. Um, yeah, so there I mean, we are. Well, I mean, the club's yeah. on the turnaround, and um, you know, uh, we, we're almost out of time. Now, this is really lovely. And I, I wasn't aware of your your personal situation like that. So I really wish you well. Um, a lot of blue noses would would say the same because you know uh, those of us of a certain age we, we, we love watching you play and the, your commitment and um, you know a happier times. So uh, fingers crossed. Uh, hope you can um, get what you want from the game as well and uh, keep right on. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, Chris. Cheers. Mm-hmm.